Well, hello everyone. My name is Sam George. Uh, I lead Azure IoT. I'm joined today uh, with a, by Olivier Block, who's going to be moderating all the questions. We have a ton of exciting things to talk about today. Um, and so all of the questions and answers are going to be at the end. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, so first up, I, I wanted to talk about IoT's response to COVID-19. Now, as many of you know, our fundamental strategy in IoT is partner-led. And so when the COVID-19 crisis first hit, uh, we did what's natural to us, which was work with all of our partners. And over the last six weeks, what we've put together is our partner ecosystem's response to the COVID-19 uh, crisis. And what we've done is we've assembled a set of over 160 different partner solutions. Those are all now available up on the Azure Marketplace and the link that you see here. Um, and some of these are from partners like PCL, which can actually drop ship uh, coronavirus testing kits or coronavirus testing stations directly outside of a business. Uh, and inside the station keeps workers safe, monitors, does predictive maintenance. Uh, and then other solutions by, for example, partners like MicroShare, um, which helps track and trace of critical assets within hospitals, ensures safe distancing, and also helps keep frontline workers safe. Now, if you're interested in joining this effort and contributing IoT solutions to it, please reach out to us at iotcovid19 at microsoft.com. And the other thing we've been doing is accelerating all of our online training. Uh, so you can see at aka.ms forward slash mslearniot, we now have all of our online training that's completely free. And we even have a new certification that we're going to be talking about in just a second. Um, IoT and edge computing and AI <clears throat> are definitely being brought to bear in the fight for uh, COVID-19. And there's a lot of great examples out on the Azure marketplace of how that's happening. So a few years ago, our CEO Satya started talking about this vision of an intelligent cloud and an intelligent edge. And nowhere is this more uh, relevant than in IoT and edge computing solutions. So what we think of when we think of this intelligent cloud and intelligent edge is about enabling solutions that span both the cloud and the edge. It's not for us about everything moving to the cloud, and it's not like everything's going to move back to the edge. Instead, we think the durable pattern is solutions that cross cloud and edge. And IoT and edge computing and 5G and AI all play a critical role in fusing the edge and the cloud. Uh, and increasingly, we're starting to see that with digital twins as well. We're going to be talking a lot about digital twins today. But the first thing that I wanted to do is sort of zoom back and see a long view of the industry and where things are going and what's happening now, what's about to happen, and then what's coming in the future. So as we step back and think about these evolutions that are the evolution of connected solutions, today, customers and partners are building solutions around connected assets, connecting to that hospital equipment, connecting to industrial uh, pieces of equipment, agricultural deployments. And the whole goal in this phase of connected solutions is to find insights from those, uh, those heavy assets, to predict their maintenance needs, to power break, uh, brand new services on top of those. And what we're really starting to see now, we've started to see over the last year or so, is this emergence towards not just connecting assets themselves, but the environments that those assets are in. And so this new emerging trend of connected environments is a really important one in the industry right now. And that covers everything from uh, smart manufacturing. So for example, with Azure customers like Unilever that are connecting not just the assets in their factory, but also their entire supply chain coming in, as well as the products going out and the customer sentiment thereof. And so it's that entire digital feedback loop spanning an entire environment that winds up being the really value of the solution. And then as you look forward into the future, we think that there's going to be this emerging pattern that we're already starting to see some signals of of connected ecosystems. And what we mean by that is, is I wind up having that full connected uh, manufacturing uh, environment. Um, I, I naturally it lends itself well to partner, partner with adjacencies, like partnering with the smart cities uh, that, that those factories are in, partnering with the smart energy distribution grids um, that those factories connect to. Um, so really exciting time. And for now, what we'd like to do is turn our attention to connected assets to this, what's, what's right now. Now, over the last five years, we've been super busy putting together what we feel is the most comprehensive IoT portfolio in the whole industry. And there's a lot on this slide and many of it we've covered uh, previously. 
but all of it now has training up on aka.ms forward slash msLearnIoT. Everything from our IoT and edge device support through all of the services for IoT, from connecting and managing devices at scale, with billions of devices sending trillions of messages, um, data storage systems, analytic systems like Azure Synapse, and then business process integration like Power Automate and uh, Azure Logic Apps. Uh, and then moving up the stack, we haven't stopped there. We've been introducing SaaS offerings, and in fact, SaaS platforms like Azure IoT Central, Dynamics Connected Field Service, and more. And then providing accelerators in all of the priority industries that you see here to help our partners get to market faster. And finally, all of that protected by Azure Security Center for IoT. There's thousands of customers that are already benefiting from these connected asset uh, capabilities that we brought to market. And very importantly, we have a huge ecosystem now of partners all the way from developer partners uh, in the developer community to uh, ecosystem partners across system integrators and advisors to solution providers, connectivity providers, device, device providers, you name it. IoT really takes a village. It is a ecosystem and partnering market and we are here to have the best partner ecosystem on the planet. Now, as you look at the connected asset space, there's a lot of exciting things that we're bringing to market and announcing uh, this week. Um, so this is a pretty, pretty dense slide and I'm gonna cover all of these things in detail. So the first thing that we're thrilled to announce is that all of our free training is now up and available on Microsoft Learn. And you go to, go to the link that you see here, aka.ms, uh, MS Learn IoT. So this covers all of the services that we build, the reference architectures, the best practices, all of it. And it's all up there available. You can go through it in a self-paced way. Um, and then if you decide that you want to become certified as a specialist in Azure IoT, we now have a Microsoft certified specialty that's available at the link you see below. And what this helps you do is assert to your employer, to your customers, that you are in fact an expert at all of the Azure IoT services and capabilities. So turning our attention to a bunch of the announcements that we've got around IoT devices and IoT edges, uh, I, sorry, IoT edge uh, capabilities. First, I'm thrilled to announce that Azure RTOS is now generally available. So Azure RTOS is based on our acquisition of ExpressLogic ThreadX and the whole ThreadX family. And this is all now available and backed by Microsoft as Azure RTOS. Uh, super compact, super fast. In fact, it's the smallest, fastest real-time operating system on the planet. Uh, for disconnected environments, it can run in as little as two kilobytes of memory. For connected environments, it can run in as little as 50 kilobytes of memory. And it's all deeply integrated with our IoT services, including Azure Security Center for IoT. Provides very fast time to market. Um, and the other thing that we've done is we've now made this all open source and available up on GitHub. Um, and it's up there as shared source. And what that means is that I can go explore it. I can uh, use it for evaluation and development. We have lots of developer kits through our solution, our um, silic silicon partners. And when I decide to take up something to market, then I can come and license it with Microsoft or through the uh, silicon partners and then go to market. And that provides, that license provides all of the great support from Microsoft that you've come to expect from other our other operating system offerings. Now we've been busy with partners like NXP and Renesas and Qualcomm and Microchip and ST and all the others you see here, um, forming deep partnerships and making it so that all of these partners have Azure RTOS as a first class part of their ecosystem and developer boards and devices that all support it. The other thing that I'd encourage you to check out is that uh, Azure RTOS now fully supports Azure IP Advantage. Um, so as you're building connected solutions, um, I'd encourage you to check out how important that is. It's another industry first. All of this is available up on azure.com forward slash RTOS. The other thing we're talking about today is that we're thrilled to, to announce that we've made Azure Sphere and Azure RTOS work better together. Now, Azure Sphere is and continues to be our hero offering for tiny device security, right? For those small microcontrollers. Um, and Azure Sphere is a fully, you can almost think of it as like a SaaS offering for secure, securing those devices. And as you look at an Azure Sphere chip, it actually contains many different cores. One of those cores is a Cortex-A, which runs the Azure Sphere operating system, which is a Linux kernel. And that's a Linux kernel that Microsoft stand behind, stands behind, patches, updates. 
but there's also a few Cortex uh, M chip uh, cores on those Sphere chips. And that's where Azure, Azure RTOS comes in. Azure RTOS provides the real-time operating system needs that Azure Sphere doesn't have. And so, so the true tr truly work better together. So you can have a state-of-the-art secure device that's fully backed by Microsoft top to bottom with both Azure Sphere and Azure RTOS. So Azure IoT Edge is our uh, edge computing platform and we're thrilled to announce um, after working with tons and tons of production grade enterprise customers, we've announced a whole bunch of new features this week uh, on Azure IoT Edge. The first is something we call layered deployments. And what layered deployments is, is we've noticed working with these customers that many times when you're operating fleets of tens or hundreds of thousands of IoT Edge devices, that there's lots of different deployment targets that you wind up having, slightly different on each device. So layered deployments enables me to be able to reuse parts of my deployment across those devices and update just those components. Um, and then we'll automatically figure out the right devices to target with those updates. Advanced diagnostics. If something uh, happens on your IoT Edge device and there's a problem with your workload, you can issue a single command from the cloud to the device. We'll collect all the logs from the IoT Edge runtime, all the modules that are running there, collate that, return that to the cloud so that you can do deep inspection. And then X509 certificate attestation. So this works end to end now from IoT, uh, IoT Edge uh, devices to the device provisioning service and individual leaf node IoT Edge devices. Um, the other thing that we're busy working on, we'll be bringing to market in the coming month uh, is advanced monitoring. And so what this is, is we already support Azure Monitor for IoT Edge. But this is taking it to a whole new level. You'll be able to see everything that's going on on the IoT Edge device. Memory, working set, CPU count, everything. Um, priority messaging. So this enables uh, prioritization of messages that are coming through IoT Edge to the cloud. And so if you have an alert from a Leaf device and you want that fast track to the cloud, this enables you to do it. And then time to live messages enable you to timestamp messages so that if an Azure IoT Edge device is offline and reconnects, we can drop those messages that aren't relevant anymore. So turning to Windows IoT, a um, whole lot of exciting announcements on Windows IoT. The first is first class support for Linux on Windows IoT. And what that provides is that customers can benefit from uh, the great operating system capabilities that Windows IoT provides in terms of security and OS patching and updates and manageability, and yet still be able to run Azure IoT Edge in a Linux VM and run all of my Linux workloads right on Windows IoT. We've also been working with our silicon partners like NXP to lower the build of materials requirements to run Windows IoT, and then improving uh, our device update center for better control of your Windows IoT deployments. Now, turning from devices towards the cloud, um, we have a lot of exciting announcements, and I'm thrilled to announce this first one, which is IoT Hub Private Link Support. And what that is, is VNet support for IoT Hub. This enables customers and partners to bring their IoT Hub <clears throat> into their isolated Azure VNet in the cloud. And so what this does is this winds up denying all inbound, outbound uh, traffic to your solution, but you can still tunnel into that IoT Hub sitting in your Azure VNet via express route or via virtual private networks from the devices on premises right up into IoT Hub. This is an industry first. We're the only hyperscale cloud that has this capability. Super thrilled to announce this. It's been a big customer request. The other thing that we've been busy improving on is IoT plug and play. So IoT plug and play, we talked about late last year uh, in terms of providing uh, a schema for the IoT interaction model between IoT devices and cloud solutions from being able to author that interaction model with Visual Studio and being able to generate software from that uh, schema, and then certify that as plug and play ready. And then as those devices connect to solutions that support IoT plug and play, like IoT Central, it means that those devices just automatically connect, they automatically, data starts flowing, you can interact with those devices without writing a single line of code from the solution. Super exciting stuff. And we're thrilled to announce a new set of preview capabilities. The first is Azure Digital Twins alignment. So later in the talk, we're going to be talking more about Azure Digital Twins. But with Azure Digital Twins, we've introduced something we call the Digital Twin Definition Language, which lets you model that interaction pattern with anything, including now IoT devices. So what this alignment enables you to do is as you connect devices through IoT Hub that are plug and play, 
and those flow into digital twins, then those devices will show up in Azure Digital Twins as just another uh, digital twin, and you can interact with it immediately. We've also made it dramatically easier to use existing devices and make them plug and play ready. You simply provide a digital twin definition language document on your connection, a few small modifications to your code, and your device is plug and play. Um, and then we're also announcing that final certification is just to begin ahead, just, is about to begin just ahead of our general availability uh, for IoT plug and play. <clears throat> now, turning to IoT Central, so far we've been talking about devices and platform services. IoT Central is our fully managed IoT app platform that brings together all of our services and IoT Edge support and everything and makes it super, super easy for any developer, for any customer and partner to get started with a fully uh, hyperscale and secure IoT solution. We've seen a lot of great pickup from this across many of the solution providers that you, solution builders that you see below. And we're thrilled to announce some new capabilities available now in IoT Central. The first is general availability of IoT Edge. So what this means is I can now connect, manage, provision IoT Edge devices right from within IoT Central. And this means that everything that Azure IoT Edge supports, including our uh, entire module marketplace, including all of our cognitive services and all of those different Azure services can now interact directly with IoT Central. You can adapt to industrial devices using our OPC connectors. Um, and so this provides a rich new set of possibilities for I, uh, Azure IoT Central solutions. We're also thrilled to announce the general availability of, availability of Azure Sphere support. So what this does is this provides Azure Sphere-based templates for IoT Central. And it also means that a lot that the uh, Azure Sphere alerts that come from the Azure Sphere services are surfaced now in IoT Central. We've made a ton of dashboard improvements, including both personal and shared dashboards for operators. And we've made a ton of improvements in terms of being able to use multiple devices on a dashboard, multiple telemetry, tree, multiple telemetry streams from devices uh, on the dashboard. And then best of all, our two-tier pricing is generally available as well. And so if you're a developer and you want to get started with IoT Central, you can do so with two devices that are free forever. Um, if you want to start using it in production, we have two different pricing models. You see here, uh, 40 cents um, a month as well as 70 cents a month. So super cheap, especially for the amount of services that uh, this solution is using and all the capabilities that it provides. It's been great to see the pickup in both IoT Central as well as plug and play. And one of our partners on that is Regato. And Regato has some edge solutions that they've now made available in IoT Central that help businesses do occupancy and space utilization analysis, um, track employees, ensure safe distancing, uh, do condition monitoring. And all of this is available now from Regato with an IoT Central template. And their edge devices that are connected to this uh, are all plug and play. So super exciting to see uh, the industry's response to our efforts to make IoT easier and easier for everyone. All right, so as data flows in from an IoT solution, it often comes in in a time series fashion, right? like temperature and humidity repeated every 10 seconds. So Azure Time Series Insights is our hero offering for time series support for IoT. It's a fully managed serverless platform that includes a platform as a service layer as well as a SaaS experience. So it has a rich dashboard for you to inspect and interrogate all of your time series data. Um, and it makes complicated data wrangling uh, not required anymore. You simply connect devices to it uh, or you connect from other sources and away you go. It's being used by some incredibly sophisticated and high scale customers like the ones that you see at the bottom of the slide. Um, and one of those examples is Fonterra, someone that we've been partnering with, New Zealand dairy farmer that's connected tons and tons of assets to IoT Central using tons and tons of data points, millions of data points, and finding insights across it. So we're thrilled to announce uh, Azure Time Series Insights Gen 2. So this is a new quantum leap, uh, unparalleled on the market um, for time series for IoT. And it adds a couple really important capabilities. One of those is a time series model. And what we mean by that is the ability to add structure to your time series data. And you can add multiple, multiple hierarchies of that. Now, that time series structure is also aligned with the digital twin definition language. We've added multi-layered storage. So it's not just about a fast warm store anymore. We also have support for cold storage. So you can bring your own Azure storage account or Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2. And when you do, we will write Apache Parquet files with all of that time series data 
um, directly into your store. And what that means is now I can have a rich query API that goes across warm and cold smartly. And also I can now use all of the open source as well as Microsoft analytics tools. So you can just use Azure Machine Learning to build machine learning and AI models based on your time series data. You can use Azure Synapse Analytics out of the box with all of the time series data stored in Azure Data Lake Storage or Azure Storage. Uh, and then we also have out of the box Power BI connectors that enable you to connect automatically to your time series data and have live dashboards. We're putting the finishing touches on Azure Time Series Insights Gen 2. It's uh, soon going to be generally available. And so uh, if it has the features that you need, you can check that out, start using it now, uh, and get updated in place to our generally available uh, version of that. All right, so, so far we've been talking about connected assets. And so what we want to do is turn our attention now to this new emerging phase of connected environments. So as you look across all of these different environments from manufacturing plants and factories and industrial sites to smart energy with generating stations and substations to healthcare with hospitals to smart uh, to real estate with campuses, all of these historically have been connecting assets and increasingly are starting to connect entire environments. A great example is our own campus. So we're in the process of redoing our Redmond campus. We have 17 new buildings that are coming uh, coming to life there. And what we're doing as we're doing that is we're creating a connected environment for that entire campus. And we're building a full Azure Digital Twin instance for that entire campus. And all of our suppliers are plugging into that Digital Twin instance. So the benefits of connected environments include things like understanding and then being able to optimize everything that's happening in those environments, not just the assets. Reduce costs to be able to provide breakthrough employee experiences like we are in our smart campus. Uh, and then even to be able to provide contactless uh, or contactless interactions, like employees walking through doors and doors opening. Um, these are the kind of things that you can achieve with a connected environment. Now, the challenges for most customers are pretty steep because doing this at scale and building a full you know, digital replica of that environment can be very challenging. So what we've been doing is we've been busy over the last year putting together a whole set and aligning all of our offerings around this emerging pattern of connected environments. And the star of the show, the center of all of this is Azure Digital Twins. Azure Digital Twins is really about modeling anything to be able to create a live model of that, to control the present, to track the past, to simulate possibilities and predict the future. And so what, we have, what we've introduced is something we call the Digital Twin Definition Language, which is a schema to model anything. We've lined that up with Azure Time Series Insights. We've lined that up with Azure Maps. Um, you can use Azure Spatial Anchors to find the precise location of things in these smart and connected environments. And we've also lined up digital twin definition language with our IoT services like IoT Hub and IoT Central with IoT Plug and Play. Oh, and it's not just about connecting to assets with digital twins. This is super important. You can certainly do that through IoT Central, through IoT Hub, through third party uh, offerings, but it's also about connecting the business systems. So for example, in our smart campus, to track, uh, you know, if, to enable the employee experience that I can order anything from the cafeteria from my desk. Part of the Azure Digital Twins is taking signals from business systems that say what's on the menu today or uh, the food supply that's coming into the cafeterias. And so this digital world is an incredibly important part of fusing uh, and creating these live connected environments. So a lot of exciting offer, uh, announcements that we're gonna talk through in just a second. Uh, as it relates to connected environments. The first of those is Azure Digital Twins. So Azure Digital Twins has been in preview and based on all of the amazing things that customers and partners have been doing with it, we've introduced a new set of capabilities. The first is that digital twin definition language and you can see a snapshot of it. Uh, it's a JSON LD schema um, over on the right side. Digital twin definition language enables you to model anything in terms of the telemetry that that thing sends, the properties that it reports or synchronizes, the commands you can issue to it, and as well as relationships that it has to other twins. And we fully support inheritance now. So I can have a conference room with a derived, uh, uh, or a room with a derived conference room with a derived executive conference room. Um, and like I've said, we've lined that up with IoT plug and play, as well as a time series insights data model. Once you feed digital twin definition language into Azure Digital Twins, we materialize a live execution environment. This is not a database. This is a living, breathing 
distributed object model effectively that's associated in a graph relationship. And then once you've done that, you can query across those relationships to any depth. You can also connect input from IoT as well as business systems, either through IoT Hub or Logic Apps or directly through REST APIs. And that makes the model come alive and start eventing. And as those events happen, you can handle those events and then output that data out to Azure Logic Apps, uh, out to at Data Lake Storage Gen 2 and Time Series Insights, and use it with things like Synapse Analytics. So this really completes that arc. And then finally, we've been busy building partnerships. We're really providing the platform layer. And then we have partners. We announced last year Ansys, who builds incredibly sophisticated simulation uh, using physics-based digital twins. And that's all built on top of Azure Digital Twins now. Uh, as well as we're thrilled to announce Bentley, who has iTwin, their iTwin system for connecting critical infrastructure, roads and smart grids and smart cities um, on top of Azure Digital Twins. We've seen a ton of customer use cases <clears throat> for this um, from Edge Technologies and Bosch for smart buildings, Willow with smart rail, Wazata with smart manufacturing. Um, it's clear that this is an important emerging pattern. And then last, we're thrilled to announce this week that we've joined as a founding member, the Digital Twins Consortium. So the Digital Twins Consortium is all about openness and interoperability, standardizing the way digital twins are described, standardizing the specific ontologies for each market segment. And we're joined by a whole set of groundbreakers, many of whom you saw on the former slide, um, that are gonna be partnering with us. Um, and it's incredible to see the progress of this consortium. So we're really excited to kick this off uh, and get going. And then finally, I want to turn our attention to Azure Maps. So Azure Maps is our go-to enterprise geospatial developer platform, bar none, for Azure solutions. It includes all of the rich capabilities that you see here, as well as some of the ones that we've recently announced, like weather service, Power BI integration, and support for government clouds. <clears throat> now, as you connect Azure Digital Twins to these environments, you often want a map-based representation of what's inside these environments the inside of a factory, the inside of a smart building, the inside of a hospital. But you don't want that map freely available to the public and be able to be indexed. So we're thrilled to announce this week Azure Maps Creator. Azure Maps Creator enables any enterprise to take CAD diagrams and generate private indoor maps and even private outdoor maps. We will provide multiple levels of detail, built-in map styles and dynamic styling options. And so, I can then use this in my digital twin connected environment application <clears throat> and customers can use this in combination with all of the public map data in Azure Maps so they can provide employee experiences where they can go everywhere from getting directions from a public location into a factory right up to an asset. Um, so we're thrilled to announce Azure Private or Azure Maps uh, Creator. We have a bunch of great sessions this week. Uh, we have a session on uh, Azure Digital Twins. Um, and all the other ones you see here. Uh, and then I think we have time for a few questions. Yeah, we do, Sam. Thanks a lot for that presentation. So, um, you know, catch up on all the links. Uh, and we uh, have a, one question actually that I wanted to bring up about solution accelerators. Uh, one yeah. of our partners uh, is asking, they're an ISV and they're, they're, they're asking, hey, where can I publish my solution accelerator solution? And there was a related question uh, as well about the fact that um, there's a solution accelerator that are in preview now and some are broken and whatnot. So what's the story there? Where are we at? Yeah, it's a great question. So what we're doing as part of our reference architecture work is providing those solution accelerators so that people can see the right way to put things together. Um, but as we see going forward, um, what we've been seeing is many, many customers and partners are, are benefiting from just using the reference architecture alone or from using uh, solutions like Azure IoT Central. So if you have a, a particular solution accelerator that you want to partner uh, with us on, please reach out. If it's relevant to the uh, COVID-19 uh, thing, you can reach out at that email address. Uh, you can also reach out. Uh, we'll provide links uh, to reach out to us directly as well. Awesome. So unfortunately, we have to wrap up. So our uh, team actually is trying to answer as many questions as possible in the chat. They're doing a fantastic job, Sam. Great presentation. Uh, everyone online, don't forget to go check out all the IoT session at aka.ms slash IoT at build 2020. Thanks a lot, Sam, again. And thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Thank you all. Have a great day and stay safe.